I would like to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Thursday, May 11th to order and accept nominations for chairman. And nominate Tom Frame. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll entertain uh, a nomination for clerk. Nominate uh, John Hickey. Second. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Stan Wysocki on his uh, win, which is, thank you, whether you're in third term or fourth term? Fifth. 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 <laughs> Feels like the tenth. <laughs> <laughs> Only the fifth. Congratulations. Uh, our first, uh, first uh, event is a request from, was from Meg O'Leary to hold a concert on the town common on June 4th. Yeah, I'm um, sure. Okay. Um, I'm here on behalf of Town Common to ask for approval to hold a free concert on the Common on June 4th at 5 p.m. Sunday, June 4th, 5 p.m. with the Concord Band for 75 minutes. Chief Nelson is setting up the police detail. That's correct. And the Trinity Church has approved the use of their parking lot like we've used in the past for the past events. And is this, is this the first one that it we've is, done? It's the first concert with the Concord Band. Okay. And it is, it's just to thank the town. So, yeah. Okay. So, thank the town and all the uh, chiefs okay with everything? I think yep. I think we're 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 yep, we're all set. Okay. Is there any, anyone else that we had to um, clear anything with? I have no questions. Okay. Who's taking care of the detail? Um, we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with it. Good. Yeah. Questions. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the uh, concert on the town common on June 4th, 2017, and that's sponsored by the Conservation Trust. Yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, so thank you very much. Next, next item is the request to hold Bolton Lions toll booth in front of the library from 8.30 to 12 on May 13th, the rain date of May 20th. Okay. How are you? Good. Tom Crane, very nice to meet you. Same here. Thank you. I'm glad you So, I'm here. We want to, uh, every year we hold uh, this uh, toll booth for a good cause. And this year we want to do it this coming Saturday from 8.30 to 12.30. Okay. That's uh, the, the uh, toll booth. Yeah, 13. And rain date is 20, but looks good. 13 looks good. Okay. <laughs> and um, the library has approved it? Uh, not leverage, it's a Murphy's insurance that did that part. Oh, okay. Of the okay. okay. So, yeah, we approached them and they said, okay. It's, in, it's on their, yeah. uh, in their parking lot. Yeah. Okay. And also, I spoke with the Chief Nelson and he was also He's okay with it? Yeah. Okay. And is this the first year you've done this? No, no, no. no. This, is, this is the first year I'm sitting in the chair for coming to our Okay. So I'm new to this. So okay. Yeah, they, these guys, they, they've done this for years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 What is the purpose of it? Just a this is, yeah, this is basically we use for the we are various programs like eye glassware and uh, some uh, scholarship for the students, all these social bodies. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. Questions? Okay. Well, then, uh, do you have any questions? No, I'm fine. So I, I'll entertain uh, a motion to approve Bolt Lions toll booth in front of the it's actually Murphy Insurance, not the town library. Yeah, it is Murphy Insurance. Okay. But it's on 117. Yeah, it's exactly. I see. From 8.30 to 12 noon on May 13th with a... 12.30. It's 12.30. 8.30 to 12.30. So, okay. 12.30. Yeah. yeah. It's my day. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, on May 13th with the rain date of May 20th. Yes. Okay, I make a motion to approve the local Myers Park toll booth request from the library <coughs> Murphy's on 117 13th, 2017 from 8.30 to 12.30 to 9.00 a.m. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. You're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Next item is the town administrator report. Um, I expect to have an update on Minuteman for tonight. Uh, Unfortunately, I uh, don't have any new, any news. That oh, I don't know what's going to have. So, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, what are we going to do? I, I don't mean to part from tradition, but uh, uh, I have nothing new on that this evening. And the uh, one thing that I wanted to get out um, to make folks aware of is that the town yard sale uh, the date has been revised. It was going to be. It ended up being scheduled for the same date as the senior shredding. Uh, Day, not really party, but the event. Uh, so it, it's been moved to uh, uh, June 24th with a rain date of June 25th. So it's just an informational update on that. Uh, and going on, I guess, with the light agenda for this evening, that's all, that's all I have unless the board has any questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Board of Selectmen business. First item is the post town meeting review uh, yeah, traditionally this is something that the board of selectmen and advisory and the town clerk discuss and town moderator I don't think is here yet um, uh, but um, really just to discuss any any uh, any key items that uh, we need to we need to immediately note to follow up on um, obviously there are next steps in, in pursuing the purchase of the common um, aside from that, uh, it was a really smooth meeting. Uh, we had uh, one question on the uh, on the uh, operating budget, no questions on the uh, school budget. Uh, the town the, the budget was passed unanimously from where I sat. I don't want to steal it. Really? You know, I don't want to steal advisory yeah. thunder, but really this was. I thought in, in my years, I thought this was the smoothest town meeting that I've sat through. Then we also could pass over to uh, we could articles for the culverts if they came in lower. That's right. So we were, we were we were good there. So it was a I thought it was a great meeting. I think you know advisory worked really hard on on the budget. Everybody involved did. But we don't we can never know if the uh, budget workshop that we had a week before a town meeting helped people or not, but it certainly didn't hurt. You know, we worked hard to try to get information out. Yeah. Uh, Richard started that last year, and it, it, uh, we've had smooth town meetings last year and this year. I think it, I think it must be helpful, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it's something that we continue doing. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll let others on advisory uh, chime in as well. It no doubt is very smooth. I think, uh, you know, my hope is next year, you know, with the work that we'll, we'll do over the course of this next year, with adding to, you know, the, all of the stuff around the, the government uh, finance officers, you know, award, you know, working towards that and just making more information available, my hope is um, it, it'll even be more, uh, you know, informative. Uh, I, I received some feedback on um, the idea of including the five-year capital plan into the mm -hmm. presentation so I think that's a, a, a great idea um, you know I think uh, it would be nice to, and we started this year I mean we, we had a dedicated slide on the breakdown of revenue um, so we will you know further that um, I met with Brian Boyle this morning and he's making um, really good progress on the org chart I think the old yeah. charts. I think they'll be done pretty, pretty soon, so I think we'll have them all ready to go um, no later than the fall. I would say probably earlier than that. You know. But uh, we'll have we can get them up on the website, and you know they'll be ready for you know next year's warrant. Yeah, I mean overall, once through that, I um, you know I, I personally wasn't tremendously thrilled when the moderator decided to stop and ask. You know what what the trust wanted to do but uh I, i'm trying to figure out the last time the the you know town came to a halt to ask 
you know, an, an audience member how they would like to have the town annual town meeting proceed. So uh, I wasn't tremendously thrilled with that, but uh, whatever. You know, that's my personal opinion. And uh, it would have been nice uh, for all the individuals who decided to show up within the last half hour. It, it, it would have been nice had they decided to at least stick around for the last three that were ultimately passed over, but it was an indication of how little they understood of the overall process. Um, so, just a little. <laughs> so, you know, that, uh, that, that was my take. Yeah, that was nice and smooth. Should be that way every year. Well, I think we're doing. I think we're doing some new things. I think it's helping, and and, and I think the process going to evolve so we can make it even better. Right. Nothing further on that. Uh, we're good to have anything on that. I'm sorry. On the um, how many review? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Next item is. Uh, setting the selectmen's meeting schedule. So we have a calendar in the back of of your warrant, um, of your agenda, I'm sorry. And Linda and I, as we try to do every time we uh, the selectmen's agenda gets set, we discuss um, potential meeting dates, try to keep within our custom. So in May, two weeks out, we would have May 24th. And May 25th. I'm sorry. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at calendar 2018, so that's all right. You have 2017. There you go. All right, so uh, copying my notes. Um, <laughs> we have May 25th, and then uh, we would go, uh, normally we would go with June 8th, uh, or many times we would go with June 8th, but I'm personally unavailable that week, so I suggested June 15th and June 29th, and, we would want to meet the 29th anyway because it's year end, it would, fiscal year end, it would give us a chance to deal with any last minute mm -hmm. uh, year end issues. And then we would meet um, the second Thursday in July, July 13th, in case the board has to deal with it with any uh, fiscal year close issues because we would close the fiscal year, I believe, on, uh, well, it would be that week, I think, technically June 15th, but the last meeting would be June 13th. And then, you know, we go into our summer schedule. And I'm aware of some availability <coughs> challenges, uh, not unusual. So the next meeting for the meeting for August would be August 31st, the last Thursday in August. Okay. And then getting back to our meeting norms, we would look at in September, September 14th and 28th. Um, in October, October 12th and 26th. And then in November, uh, because we do have obviously Thanksgiving the way we try to approach that is to have one meeting normally in November which would which would be November 16th and then in December uh, we would be uh, we would, again to try to stay away from Christmas week we would do December 7th and December 21st and usually we, we stop at that point and then when we get to this to a December meeting we'll set we would set the calendar for the remainder of uh, well up, up until May up to the next election but we would do that in December so if that's all right with the board that's what we would count here it's fine to see you look at the school schedule We get into the February the break and the April break in the, yeah. in the spring. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. Did you? I'm sorry. Do we need a motion on that? It would be good to have a motion on it. So I'll entertain a motion to accept the selection schedule as outlined um, by the town administrator. So move. Second. <laughs> All those. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Next item is the memorandum of, of agreement for school resource officer discussion of possible vote. Yeah, Bob, how are you? Good, gentlemen. I'm 
Chief, how are you? Chief. So I think this this arose first discussion of it arose last fall in a couple meetings with the school committee. And I I know at the, one of the tri towns in Stowe we discussed it briefly with the council for the school district and what we have before us now is the first first draft for first the selectmen to say. That's right. That's right. It's been, I, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I know that uh, Bob's office has, has looked at it, as has the school district's council. And last night at the school committee meeting, the school committee reviewed it with the superintendent and expressed their approval, they actually voted uh, their approval. But then it, so then it comes to the selectmen for any changes, you know, if any potential changes or approval. Uh, so please. Yeah. And it's been, I think there's been some confusion on exactly what this memorandum of understanding is. And the memorandum of understanding that gets before the board now really de deals with the sharing of information between the school district and the, and the police department. It provides guidelines for, for reporting, really back and forth. Incidents that the, that the police would report to the school district if, in fact, it was an incident with a, with a student, and then vice versa. If there was an incident that the school was aware of, they would, they would inform the police department of that. There's a criteria that set up, you know, what are reportable incidents. So that's fine. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a good memorandum of understanding. But I know there were some questions in the past from, from members of the board regarding other aspects of the relationship between the school district and the police department. This MOU does not address that. It does not specifically address the roles and the responsibilities of the SRO, you know, the resource officer. That would have to be subject to a, you know, to a separate agreement if you, want, if you wanted to find those roles and, and, and procedures, if, if, if the board even wanted to go down that path. Under the, the statute that, that was enacted a couple of years ago uh, that involves SROs, that actually provides that the agreement regarding the SRO duties would be between the police chief and the superintendent of schools. Um, so I, this agreement is not that. This is not the agreement uh, under the SRO statute between the police chief and the superintendent. That this agreement in front of you now is really more dealing with information sharing as opposed to actual responsibilities and duties. So I just want to make sure the board is, the board is clear on that. And, if, and, I, and I know that once you, you know, and I know you, you've had an opportunity to read it, it doesn't address duties and responsibilities at all. So I think there were two, there were two main issues that drove the discussion. And one was um, in the event of litigation, that the town of Bolton be indemnified. So I think that that, and we, you and I had a conversation earlier today, that that is clearly outside the scope of this agreement. Absolutely, would probably be a much bigger discussion. It would have to, you'd have to reach out to um, not only the Neshoba um, School Committee, but probably the boards of select one of the other towns. <clears throat> Didn't we have some discussions about that in Tri Town about their their willingness to share in the responsibility related to the school resource officer? And I thought that, that based upon the comments of the council for the school district, I thought that that would be addressed in this, but it isn't. And I've re read it, and it doesn't seem appropriate for that. And in fact, this agreement really doesn't pay for anything that, you know, those two issues at all. It's not a good vehicle for, for either of those two, two issues. I would agree. So, um, I don't know how, how we would, we would have to start a discussion with maybe a tri-town mm -hmm. um, and with the school committee at a tri-town. I think that's probably the appropriate forum. And, and we have Tritown scheduled for June 14th uh, here with the host. So on the indemnification issue, um, that's where it, it seems like it needs to go. But could that be a separate issue? Could we have another MOU for that? And, and look at this for what um, this is, uh, you know, so that we can uh, be on the same page with the school that we, you know. I agree. It can share, you know. I agree. The, the one comment I have, and then I'll, I'll stop talking. Uh, because in the statute, one, one issue that came up 
here at, and subsequent Tritowns was the de-escalation. And the statute, this is um, chapter 7137P. This is the right? Yeah, that's it, that's correct. And uh, so it, it expressly mentions de-escalation and in the agreement, it, in the MOU, Roman 3, um, capital, capital B, those prevention strategies, within there, there is no mention of de-escalation, so I was wondering uh, if we could make number six the following, just for your consideration, for our consideration, to aggressively, this is the language I was going to, to aggressively use de-escalation as the primary strategy. And if it's an information sharing agreement and it's not, maybe that it's inappropriate for this. Well, that's what I'm thinking. This, okay. this may not be the appropriate uh, venue um, to have that in. That might be the roles and responsibilities uh, of the SRO when we get to that. Um, is there going to be some, yeah. sorry to cut you off, is there going to be a policy coming out of, you know, how, how an SRO handles an incident, or where, is that papered anywhere now? No, we, we don't have anything papered there. Um, haven't started anything. Um, we've just been working on this. Right. Is that the net, is that going to come along, or? I if that's with them, we're we're leaning to. Of course, we can. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and that would be something again that would be worked out. I mean, you would you would draft that obviously as because it's a police department employee, and then in concert with with the superintendent, you know finalize a draft and then we'll go through the same iteration again for the school committee to discuss and review for the selectmen to discuss. Right. The, the liability and indemnification would be uh, the lawyer's side right. of that. We would stay away from that, but yeah, we certainly can come up with some sort of policy. Right. And, it's, and to, to, to your point, uh, Tom, the, the um, de-escalation, what, what you just mentioned that's in the statute, yeah, that, that, would, that falls under the roles and responsibilities. And that's, I think that's the agreement that, that the Chief just mentioned. Really, I, yeah, I don't think this is the place for us to put in, at least in this agreement, at least the roles and responsibilities. I think they're under the statute. The statute, like I said, is relatively new. I don't, I don't think it's a lot of municipalities probably haven't even enacted the agreement yet. But there would be a separate agreement that would talk about the roles and responsibilities and de-escalation de being <coughs> one of them. Of course, that would be something that yeah, would have to be in the Chief's the chief's realm, not, it's not a, that's not really legal. But the, the liability issue, which is completely separate, those are your two issues, we would have to handle that. There have to be some a lot of meetings with the other with the other uh, municipalities involved just to talk about you know who exposure and who's willing to take on what risk. Yeah, um, so Bob, I was wondering. Um, one of the issues was incident reports, and so after the event, um, the police department wrote a report, but there were no reports written by the administration, and that seemed to be a problem. Kind of in my research and talking to other school resources officers in other districts, um, you know, it seemed important that the police writes their report but also the administrative members involved in the incident at its inception and during would also write their own reports so that was an issue um, for me um, another one was you know we had there's a team of liaisons for you know between the police department and the school and it just seemed like it would be good to have uh, a school social worker, a uh, school psychologist, a guidance counselor on that team, um, you know, working with the school and working with, you know, the liaisons from the police department. So just your comments now, are they, you're proposing language to this or to the well, separate agreement? <coughs> Two separate agreements, or one policy. I think it, one I mean, I'll I'll leave it up to Bob, but um, there is talk about um, the liaisons in this. And Where is that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, and you're referring to the the, the, the school districts with liaisons, correct? Here they they're saying. Well, it, it lays out you know who the police department liaisons are and who the school ones are. Right, for the school district, it has a principal and assistant principal. It sounds to me like you you in that area you you want to be you want additional. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's important in part in this idea of de-escalation, having 
somebody who is representing uh, maybe less, you know, the authoritative chain of command at the school, somebody who's representing uh, the students and, you know, progressive ide ideas about de-escalation. So I, I'd like to see that. I, I think that's not appropriate for the civilian because liaison is different than someone who's, who you've designated in a role who's participating in, in the process. So you're not going to be liaisons of people who are communicating amongst one another between this between the school and the police department. You're not going to have uh, you're not going to designate a school psychologist to be a liaison to go off and talk to the chief of police. I think that that needs to be done in a more controlled environment. So I mean, as Bob said, this is this is a, a communication overall communication like a bylaw would be. The other documents that we're talking about are more like the rules and regs you write against the bylaw, which deal with the day-to-day -day mechanics, and more clearly define the roles and, and what you're describing in terms of the school psychologist and this and that, and who needs to write a report, should be in that document. I don't think it's appropriate for this, because then if you add that, which is really should be in a separate document, then we're going to start putting a lot of other stuff he in here which really isn't the right place for it. And I think, I think that we're all in agreement that we need to do that. But I think, to Bob's point, you know, this is not the, really the vehicle for that. It's a really a separate, a separate agreement that, that deals with all of that, you know, roles and responsibilities and de-escalation procedures. And, you know, what are the mechanics? If this happens, then you need to do A, B, C, and D. And if that happens, you need to do D, E, and F. So and that can, doesn't really belong yeah. in this. Can I just ask you, Jonathan, what, yeah. so what is it that, um, in terms of clinicians, you want clinician involvement when there's an incident, or? Um, you know, just in terms of, you know, the liaisons are going to be meeting and discussing things at different points, and hopefully, you know, talking about potentialities. So I, th I just think it's important that we have um, somebody, you know, from one of the, you know, there are school social workers at Neshoba, there are school psychologists, there are guidance counselors. So somebody within that group that is representing, uh, you know, the student point of view, um, I think is important. You know, an understanding of school psychology, uh, you know, teenage psychology. Um, so, and then I think, you know, the previous incident, I, the, the, I think that, you know, the school system basically said, we turned this over to the police, they wrote an incident report, we don't have any reports. And so that's a failing. The school needs to have reports um, because the incidents start with them, you know, they call the police, you know, they call the SRO, so they need to document everything that happened up to the point when the SRO takes over, and even, you know, after, if they're there. So I don't know if that belongs in here, but I'm raising that are, question. Are you saying that for this agreement or the next agreement I'm going to work on? Um, maybe it belongs, some of the, either of these two things belongs in here, or maybe it's the next one. But, um, so that's a question. Um, so yeah, and again, I think, you, you know, you could, you, you could, you know, attempt to incorporate that here, but then, you know, then you could get into more details and more details. Like probably, I don't think this disagreement certainly doesn't require if there's an incident and there's going to be some discussions after it, or, to, or there's going to be um, under this this uh, MOU that contemplates meetings to talk about preventive actions. Certainly, if the principal or the assistant principal think of, thinks it warrants having someone else from the school there, whether it be a guidance counselor or someone to discuss about these prevention uh, mechanisms and. There's nothing here barring them from participating. I mean, right. I think I don't know if they have to be named as a liaison. You could probably name. You know, I don't think you want to have five or six liaisons. I mean, that's just my own opinion. So, are you saying I, you think it would be best covered under the roles and responsibilities when you get down to the next level of detail? I, I think it would be. There, but I think to, 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 to Jonathan's point, though, if, if you want to have in these, I think if, if I understood you correctly, some of these means you may want to have these folks there because they have, you know, they have different different expertise. I, I think yeah. I want it baked in, and you know that 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 point of view is being brought in. And I think it's gonna be very helpful um, to have a psychologist or a social worker there as part of the meetings between both the police and the school administration. So I just think it adds something important to it. I think it should be in this. Um, 
I'm not really willing to vote on, you know, I'm not ready to vote on this tonight. I'd like to, um, you know, I cultivated a bunch of resources on this issue and I'd like to kind of consult with them and look at their uh, memorandum of understanding and, you know, we'll discuss, you know, I'd like to discuss it further. But I, this seems very basic and kind of boilerplate and I, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more in there. Thing. And I think most of this is we're not going to be pulling the student in and talking to the student. This is not that kind of a de-escalation policy. This is, you know, I'm going to tell the principal or I'm going to tell the um, next liaison that Johnny got arrested over in this other town because he just robbed a gas station. I'm not going to be sitting down with any of these people and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the student present. Um, if everybody you pretty much um, uh, identified would be better off in the next project that we get rolling. Plus, we'd have to even see if the school, um, would, that's not for us, you know, for me to put in my uh, agreement. That would have to be something the school would have to say, right. you know, that they feel comfortable bringing these people yeah, in. they'd but have for to this, vote on it, but, you know, it's what, what we're, you know, we're bringing up as the Board of Selectmen, what, you know, how, you know, it, we think it could work best. And so that's an important issue. But for this agreement, I think Bob will agree, that this isn't that type of a, a thing where we want everybody involved. I'm gonna tell the school administration something, and then they're gonna figure out how they're gonna handle it. This and then that's <coughs> certainly something they can think of bringing a social worker in. This is, and this is, again, this is really just, it, it, this is just a start. This, this first agreement here, it's just a sharing of information. It's just mm -hmm. that, like the chief said, there's an incident the police now in this agreement that the chief is, is, under, is obligated to, to notify the school that Johnny got arrested. Same thing if the school has an incident that, that the police doesn't know about, the school has an obligation at least to let the police know, hey, that, that there was this issue at the school. And this outlines what those issues are yeah. with that you know, mandatory reporting. <coughs> Definitely get into how it happened, how it, how it was you know, approached by the SRO or the school or the police department. It doesn't get in it. It's just a sharing of information. That's it. All those other things about the duties, responsibilities, how you react to certain situations, that's that's for another agreement. And we're not gonna get there with this agreement. This is this is really just has to do with the sharing of, of documentation. And 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 some meetings, preventive action, you know, to maybe outline what can be done better in the future. But so so I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. So it looks like it sounds like we have three goals. One is the sharing of information, which is what we have in front of us, and that, as we talked earlier today, this, this agreement tracks, tracks um, 7137P, basically, which is mandates the sharing of information, correct? Correct. So, in hindsight, whether or not we need this agreement is open to question, but, so, uh, because it's mandated by law anyway, do you do, you do anything different now than does the do you share information any differently now than under this agreement? No, we're no. We're, we're You're complying with this. Okay. So then it sounds like we need two other things. The concern about indemnification that Bolton would be left holding the bag in the event of not holding the bag, but bearing all the costs, all the, you know, if they were sued under a federal civil rights statute, all you need is a dollar in damages and you get your fees, that we would pay all the fees because of something that happened at Neshoba. And I suppose it could happen any way like that, but I think it warrants further discussion. Uh, but under a different agreement, and then the third thing is how an incident is handled. Some policy, but to your point, I agree. If the school district doesn't want to, uh, I don't know how we would force them. Why? Yeah. You know, does anyone know why they don't? They don't write up a report when a student's arrested. The school district doesn't write something up or investigate or. I, I don't know what their what their internal policies and procedures are, so I wouldn't presume to speak for the school district. Yeah, I, no. I don't think they, they didn't do it the last time, but you know it's going forward. It's trying to get that in there. So how how would we how would we get there to get that? I think. To, I, and I totally appreciate where Johnson's trying to get to go. Um, I would tend to I would tend to agree with with Bob and with the chief that when we get to and we're getting to it's not we're not going to be putting it off. We're getting to 
roles, responsibilities, and so forth. And that's when, again, in collaboration with the superintendent, you're going to talk about, okay, so when, when this type of situation happens and you need to involve, you know, these type of personnel, how, how does that happen? Who's responsible for what? And, and the two of you can work that out. So, uh, or if a certain type of incident happens, you know, how do we go through the, you know, how do we go through the de-escalation process? You know, what is the required training that we should have school personnel and police officers um, to deal with that type of thing? Uh, so I think it's, that's where we can capture all that. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's, again, it goes through a good review process, school committee, uh, selectmen, um, and, uh, and if there's something that's not flushed out enough in there, then we go through a couple of versions to get it done. But it would seem as though uh, I think that's really important to have that, inf have that information, but I think it's in the next, the next work product and not this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this, is a, this is a good start. You know, you mean, you know, a lot of these things are statutory, but you know, there's a lot of statutes out there that, 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 that municipalities and individuals don't follow. This, this is a good start to get that protocol, get, get the parties on, on paper, knowing now what their responsibilities and their obligations are. I think this is a good way to get people to start thinking about this. Then as we move to the second agreement that the Chief talked about, you know, along with the roles, responsibilities, um, you know, that, that's just my opinion. Okay, so, may, so maybe, maybe instead of, I mean, I think we should be working on, you know, if they're two or three simultaneously and not rushing to kind of pass this one through um, it sounds like it's a group project together. Um, what is the what is the term of this? I think it was blank. Indefinite. Yeah. 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 Something like the start date and uh, remains in effect until yeah. we're sending the right. Okay. I mean, my thought is, I agree. Uh, just how how can we make sure, John, that the duties and responsibilities de-escalation, so that would be between the, basically the police department and the school district, how an incident is handled, right? Or do you, does the, do the police take, like when do you guys get called in and ha how does it happen? We would take um, input from them. We probably have to have some sort of committee set up. I would um, go out and seek other policies that are out there and combine, compare, and come up with something that was uh, best for Bolton. Just to give you one, one example of something that um, was never written down, I think it now is, and I think it would need to be incorporated in roles and responsibilities, is there was an incident at the high school a couple of years ago where there was some, uh, I, I can't say that there was destruction, but there was, there was a substance smeared on some walls, there was some uh, graffiti put on some walls, um, and it was uh, uh, it happened over the weekend. When the custodians came in on Monday morning, their first reaction was to clean it up. So it was cleaned up before the police department was notified. It, we lost a lot of evidence because of that. So that's the type of thing you need to document. You know, when when personnel such as the custodians come upon a scene such as that, they don't clean it up. They report it let the police department do what they need to do and then clean it up um, you know a situation where um, a, a, a student is acting out you know that's a perfect example of okay you got to go through your de-escalation procedures and you the guidance counselor or the SRO or whoever is involved with it you know needs to go through that type of thing so depending on certain incidents that's where you have roles and you know, define roles and responsibilities and I mean, I think that's a good example to use, though, the incident it, we have. It is, but um, a lot of that's going to um, be on the school to write most of that. That's right. And then we, we come in and... Well, that's because from my, but my point is you're working with the superintendent. Does, does the school personnel report into the superintendent? So that would be, that those would be exactly the type of things the superintendent would ask the building principal and vice principals and whoever to work on and come back with those procedures just as, as the police chief. Right. You know the, uh, the, what the SRO and maybe others from the police department will do in a certain situation is this, and I think that's where we can capture, and, and we're not going to capture every scenario, but I think, you know, I think we can capture an awful lot, and by defining the roles and responsibilities. Okay. 
but we're that's correct we're doing it for the SRO we're not yes. doing it for the school we're not yes. doing it for the maintenance people that that's something Brooke would have to do on her own well that's right. my point yeah that's exactly my point yeah I mean this would wouldn't be in this agreement no I'm saying for the next document which is the roles and responsibilities I mean Brooke wouldn't presume to, to capture what you do and you wouldn't presume to capture what she does but between the two of you you can capture right but I, but I don't want to um, interrupt but I think we're getting away from the scope of what I'm supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be for the SRO. And I get that. You're saying that if the crime occurs at, at the school, now I'm going to write a rules and responsibility for... I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. And in fact, when a crime occurs at the school such as that, the police department's going to do what it's always going to do. It really would be on the school side to not touch the crime scene, basically, right. until the police can respond. So, again, I'm not trying to capture every possible scenario, but I think that's a valid example. Yeah. We'll look into so can we agree that within a certain period of time you would come back with the department's proposed right its part and then we could review that and then send it over to the district is that a does so that sound reasonable that's fine certainly uh and how long would you need for that three months three months yep coming right into the summertime i've got to get uh there's a lot of work involved in this um well, it's gonna have to look at it fine. Um, yeah. okay may even need more time Okay, so why don't we, um, when is, so this is May, so why don't we shoot for the first meeting in September to have that? Back? Okay, yeah, well, plus we have school vacation, so mm -hmm. that might hinder, we may. Um, How about September 14th? I'm just looking at school's going to start, I'm, I'm not going to have anybody for the whole summer to do anything, pretty much, unless I can, you know, send this out to, to Brooke, but I, I don't think we're going to have the cooperation of people that are on vacation where I'm working, um, teachers and administration are not around. So that's why I'm thinking we might need to even go a little bit longer. I certainly can um, report back to Dawn yeah. do we have the beginning of goal? September. Why don't we have it as a goal and then if you need more time then you yeah. know, we can deal with it then and we need more time. I'm just looking at three months off where sure. the teachers are off. Okay, well if we do September 14th, that's four months. But there's three months. All I'm saying is, I, mean, yeah. I understand the time. Okay. But there's three months that there's nobody going to be over there to, to work with me on this. Okay, well, we'll so. put that down and yep. I will time. ask for more time if I need. Okay. So. so um, is the board saying that before this current MOU gets approved? No, I think what I, my own opinion is we got this, this piece done. I think we should work on this tonight. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like more time, um, you know, I'd like to the next meeting to, to look at it and confer with the sources that, you know, I developed in, in other school districts just to look at it and see, um, look at their interviews. Sure. I got this from Concord, so okay. if you want to give him a call. Sure. All right, so, uh, so you know, I, I'd be... Uh, well, don't forget, if we're going to suggest any changes, that has to go through back to the district and the school committee. It would. Anything that's right. changed here because would need to go is, back for district right. consideration. This is not our document unilaterally to change. Well, they shouldn't have voted on it before we did. I mean, this is the first time we've seen it. Uh, I've had conversations with Vaughn about wanting to see this, you know, drafts. And it's been in the works for, I guess, six months. This is the first, you know, time we're seeing it. So I'm surprised that the board, you know, the school committee voted on it ahead of us. And I just, you know, I, I, you know, that just seems like, you know, a pressure tactic, uh, you know. Well, to be fair to the school committee, some board has to vote on it first. I know, but, you know, this, the request for the MOU came from the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. um, so, and this is the first, you know, when this arrived two weeks ago, it was the first time we've looked at it, mm -hmm. so it just seems like, to me, it's going in the wrong order. Um, I have no problem putting it over until the next meeting. That's fine. I see that so close. Uh, Bob Skarsky, North Road. I'd like to remind the board that the principal of the high school is leaving at the end of the school year, and as yet no new principal has been announced. I think for this document, you're going to need the cooperation of that principal. 
Okay. You may want to take that into account in your timeline. Thank you. Yeah, my comment was also just on you the just time identify time. yourself. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Brian Boyle, Sampson Road. Um, it sounds like that second agreement you're anticipating will be drawn up by the chief and the superintendent. Um, but <clears throat> I don't, I have no idea what her schedule is. Um, so before setting like a September deadline, I don't know if there's a way to get input from her first. Well, that would just be that would just be our first draft, just to send over for discussion. Yeah. Okay, so we we, will, we don't need a vote. We would just put that on the next. Yes, it'll be on the next agenda. Could, uh, could I ask what the next meeting is? Just because vacation's coming up. May twenty fifth. Uh, I, I will. I'll be in Florida. So if, if you don't need me there, here, um, by all means, we certainly can put it back on. But I'll be in Florida. Okay. On the twenty fifth. Uh, one other just question. Can I ask Mr. Keep what his so-called sources are that he's going to be consulting with? <clears throat> so, you know, this is one of the issues that I brought up um, uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting uh, in the fall. And, you know, in preparation for that, I've talked to SROs in different school districts. I've talked to police chiefs in different districts related to their SROs. I've talked to principals. And so, that's you know where uh, you know I gotten my information um, related to the incident at the high school and you know how they react to uses of force and so I just want to kind of reconnect with them and review our you know this draft with them. And just for the record, uh, I did take a look at the Washington University Law Review, Volume 93, Issue 4. It's a long article on on SROs that was very interesting, very recent. Uh, so, if anyone's interested. Uh, well, before we, one more thing. I mean, uh, we we've had a number of situations where members of this board have gone off and consulted with other sources, and in some cases, the full board doesn't get any kind of report back on, on what the sources were or what was discussed. I think it would be helpful if you want to drive this in a different direction that you, know, you, you prepare something and if you've been consulting with other sources over time, we certainly haven't heard or seen anything from those other sources. I think it would be beneficial for, for the other two members of the board as well as the police chief and the superintendent and the school committee to have that information available uh, and make it public so that we have we're all playing on the same playing field when it comes to discussing yeah so as, as opposed to you've talked to sources and you're not really sure what you've talked about yeah in relationship to this you know if I have any proposals that come from other uh, districts I will cite them and I do have all that Okay, so we don't need a vote because we're just putting this over. So the next item is, uh, thank you very right, much. Thanks. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank thanks you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. So the next item is vote to approve the bills slash payroll warrant uh, numbers W17-23 and W17-23A. And we've already executed those. Thank you. So. Unless anyone has any questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, both of those. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any minutes? No. And no minutes. So I'll entertain a motion to. I think I set mine on. Yes. To uh, close the meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 